Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square, and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to be sharing with you two codes that you can use to customize the look of the event list in your Squarespace website. Here's a preview of the first code listed below, and here's a preview of what the second code will do. Now in this tutorial, I'll teach you how to add these codes to Squarespace and how to customize them so you can make them uniquely yours. Without further ado, I'll go ahead and share my screen so we can get started. Here we are inside Squarespace taking a look at a list of events. Now this list of events does have a few settings and if we hop into edit mode and select edit section, here's where you can change things like the spacing on the page, reducing the space at the top and the bottom of the event list. You can also choose to have this be full or inset to display thumbnails or not, show past events or not, adjust the thumbnail ratio if you want to change the ratio there a little bit. Way too big, let's pull that back to a square, there we go. You can also choose to show the time, the location, and the export links, as well as the excerpt. Now, whatever you've selected, we're going to customize the style with code. And to do that, we'll need to head to our CSS panel. I'll go ahead and select Save and Exit. And on the left-hand side of the screen here, we're going to select Pages, and then scroll down to Website Tools, and select Custom CSS. This is where we'll add our style code to Squarespace. Now I've got two different snippets underneath this video for you. Here's the first one that's going to create this look for our events. And here's the second one that will create this look for our events. Pretty awesome, right? Let's go back to this first one. And I want to walk you through this because you'll want to customize parts of this code to make it suit the style of your own website. Now I realize looking at this here, because we changed the ratio for this image, we're not getting this centered anymore. So I'm actually gonna add a line of code. I'll be sure to include this in the description below. That's going to center all of our event information next to the image. There we go. All right, let's walk through the rest of this code line by line. This first part of our code is what's adding the border between these event items. Here I've said place a border on the top, make sure it's centered between things, that's the margin auto, we added a little bit of padding, and then we just added this part to align the event information with the center of the image. Now down here, this next line says when you see the very first event, don't give it a border on the top. Now if we scroll down to the bottom here, you'll notice this doesn't have a border on the bottom, this doesn't have a border on the top. I wanted it to have that unique style. If you do want a border on the top, just remove that line and it'll be placed there at the very top of your event list. Now to change the style of the border, you'll want to adjust line three right here. You can make this border thicker if you change the value. You can change it from solid to maybe dotted if you wanna go for that style or dashed if that's more your style. You can also change the color. This is a hex color code for a dark gray, but I can say something like the word red or I can use a different color like one of my favorite shades of blue. There we go, we've got a unique line. Now I'm gonna change this back to that dark gray color so it's easier for us to see while we're editing. And instead of dashed, I'm gonna go for a solid line. All right, let's move forward with the rest of the code. We've covered what this stuff does. Let's move on to the button. This is where things get really interesting. Now we've said, take the event list button and make the font size zero. Why did I say make the font size zero? That is how we were able to replace the text. Whoops, I gave away the hover effect. Let me move my cursor. There we go. That's how we were able to replace the text with our very own. Our button says sign up. If we remove all of this button code right here, it's going to say view event and it'll be a larger button. I want to encourage people to sign up. So we're using this code to change the style and change the text. So we did that by saying take the original text and make it font size zero. Then we adjusted the padding so the button's not as big. And this part right here makes it a smoother transition when we add our hover effect. And we'll get to that in just a second here. But these next few lines of code, this is where we've customized the text. This is where I've said, okay, we made it font size zero, but before that button text, add this content and then make the font size one REM. So this is how it's now saying sign up. We can change this to anything we want it to be. I added a Unicode arrow at the very end to really encourage people to click there and move on to the next page. Now, font size is completely customizable for your own unique style. Maybe you want it to be gigantic. Change that to two REM and no one is going to miss that sign up button. One seemed perfect for the style of this site, but again, customize this font size on line 20 to anything you want it to be. Now here's the fun part that I totally gave away, the hover effect. I love a good hover effect. 
Here we changed the background to pink and we adjusted the color of the font, changing it to that dark gray color so it would really stand out against the pink background. Now you'll notice a few other things changed as well. I changed the width of the font. I said font weight 500 and that's going to make it more bold. And then I also added that transition so we get the smooth fade both on and off the hover effect. We can make this super bold if we want to. Now, this is limited to the font style that you're choosing. My Poppins font here on this website can go all the way up to 900. Yours might be set at just a standard bold. We'll check that out. Totally optional, but explore the font weight if you'd like to increase the thickness of the characters on a hover. And then just as we played around with the color code for that border, you can change the color code for the background and the font color. This background, let's try the word yellow. And for color, we'll make it green. And if we hover over it, we'll see that magic happen. Way too vibrant. Let's pull back to that pink and gray I had before. There we go. I like that style a lot better. Now, last but not least, we changed the ratio of the image and the text. If I remove these lines of code, you'll see that the image takes up a lot more space. It goes back to that perfect square. I wanted the text to take priority. So I added this code here that says, make sure that thumbnail only takes up about 20% of the width of the entire event space. And then make sure the column information takes up about 70%. Now 70 and 20 doesn't equal 100, so we've got some extra space on the right-hand side here. Let's change that 70 to 80, and that'll pull the text all the way to the edge of this border. If I draw a line here on the screen, we can see how it lines up with the edge there. I didn't want it to be quite on the edge, so I set that to 70, but that's totally up to you. Customize that as you see fit. I'll select save and before we move on to the next code, let's take a look at the mobile version because I want you to see what's happening here. We get the border, we get the unique button. There are no hover effects on mobile, so you're not going to see that pink button on a mobile device, but you will see the original image ratio. This part of the code only applies to the desktop version. The mobile version is going to stay with that ratio that you picked when you were editing the page itself. Okay, we covered a lot of stuff, and again, this entire code is listed underneath the video. Just make sure that you update the important parts that you want to customize, like the style of the border, maybe the padding, adjusting the font size and the content, your button color hovers, and the ratio here. All right, I'll remove this code, and we'll move on to code number two. You'll see as soon as we deleted that, things went back to normal. I'm going to paste code number two here. And wowzo, we have a very different layout here. Let's work through this together. The first part of this code changes the event item. We gave it a soft pink background. Again, we aligned items in the center. That means this text in this button, that will be center aligned with the image here vertically. Then I added a little bit of a margin bottom code because there was too much space for me. If I remove this line of code, see how much space there is between the events? As a designer, I thought I should scoot those together just a little bit more. So I added that line of code, but feel free to remove it or customize this value until it suits the style of your own site. So you can leave it or change it, totally up to you. Now let's get into the fun stuff. We've got a button with a hover effect. I changed the button on the event to have a curved border radius. Then I customized the color to a darker shade of this peach that we're using here to complement the light pink color for the background. I adjusted the font weight, which as you remember from the last code, changes how thick the characters are. This will be dependent upon the font style that you use. My font Poppins has all different kinds of font weight, so we can make this super bold if we want to. We can make it super thin if we want to but that's barely readable. And as a website designer, it's my job to make this site easy to use. So I'm gonna change this to 400, so it's very clear that this is a sign up button. Now again, we had to reset the font size to replace it with our own text. So that's why this is font size zero. Then I added a padding and a transition. Underneath that on lights 20 through 23, this is where we're adding the custom text. This is where I've changed the text to say sign up, but you can also change this to learn more, spelled correctly, there we go. Now, if you're fine with the view event button, remove this part of the code and remove the font size zero, and there we go. It'll say view event just as it was designed to do. But if you want to customize that, leave those parts of the code and change the text in between those quotation marks. All right, we're almost done. Next, we have our hover effect. This is where we said change the background color and the font color on a hover. I should mention the font color 
is exactly the same as it was before, but I left that line of code just in case you want to do a unique color for your own website. When we hover over with our cursor, you'll see the font stays the same, but the background changes color. If you do want to change the color of your font, replace these characters with the color that you want to see. All right, last but not least, we had to reset the mobile style, and let me show you why. We'll select Save, and I'm going to remove this line of code really quick. We'll go to the mobile view, and do you see how the text runs into the edge here, and it's way too much space over here? I didn't like the style of that. So I added this mobile style code to just center that text and clean up those margins so it's so much easier to use when you're scrolling with one hand. Now this is totally customizable and you can remove it. Feel free to adjust that as you see fit. But this part of the code right here says these code changes will only happen on smaller screens. So our desktop version stays exactly the same. Again, you'll find this entire code underneath the video. Just make sure that you update those important values like the background colors, the button text, the border radius. You've got a lot of fun stuff to play with. In the description underneath this video, you'll find both of the codes that we covered in this tutorial. When you add them to Squarespace, make sure that you customize those important parts like the colors so that they match the unique style of your own Squarespace website. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like and let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to learn more about all the cool things that Squarespace can do, check out some of the related content that I've linked in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, then you are going to love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. I've created a Notion database to hold all of the selectors for everything I want to modify on a Squarespace website. I've packed it with pro tips and custom code snippets that you can use to make your Squarespace website uniquely yours. Get access to this game-changing database at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.